far as if you have a custom and you prefer one of them over the other, by all means, you can choose one over the other. But never for a second even think, needless to say, say that somebody is not kosher or that all of the meat is not kosher. Why? That is 100% Lashon Ara, Shem Ra, and Apikosut. What if there's a city of Gentiles? Everyone's a Gentile, and there's 10 butchers. Out of the 10 butchers, seven of them are Jews. The rest are non Jews. But the rest of the city is non Jews. You happen to visit the city, and all of a sudden you're seeing an eagle that stole a piece of meat from one of these butchers. You don't know which one it is, it has no marking. He's flying with this piece of meat, and he drops it off on a tree or drops it on the floor right in front of you. Who does the meat belong to? Does it belong to the eagle and you have to give it back to him? Do you have to take the meat, throw it in the garbage? Do you have to take the meat back to the places, to every butcher and ask them if they lost this piece of meat? Or do you just keep it? Now, if you keep it, do you sell it? Do you feed it to your dog? Or is it kosher for you to eat it? Out of all of you that have answered, and Bo Hashem, more and more each week are answering the questions that we ask, only three answered this question correctly. The point of the question was not necessarily to see how many answer it correctly, but rather to teach you the point of what we're going to teach today. The Gemara in Masechet Bava Metzia is the original source of this sugya. Page 24 gives us exactly what we have here. It talks about what happens if somebody loses something, somebody finds something, who does it belong to, and so on. And the Gemara, it's a fantastic Gemara that tells us how much a person that does not know Torah, as far as how Allah works, can mistake, not only make mistakes in their own life, but can literally accuse kosher Jews of being wicked. And here it goes. The Gemara on page 24b says, there was a, some say vulture, some say eagle, that took a piece of meat in the market and then threw it between the palm trees of Bar Marion. Bar Marion came before Abaye to inquire as to his responsibilities. I got this meat that the eagle dropped. Obviously, he stole it from somewhere. What do I do with it? Abaye says, go. It's for you. Keep it. What does it mean, keep it? Amar Rabbi Elazar, Rabbi Shimon Belazar says, he's permitted to keep and eat the meat because it's considered kosher. From the fact that the sages permitted him, as regards the laws of proper slaughter, meaning that it's considered kosher, we see that they're basing this on the fact that the majority of the butchers were Jews. Meaning out of 10, more than five were Jews. If more than five were Jews, you can assume, according to the Torah, that the meat was stolen from one of those Jews. And if it was taken from one of those Jews, for sure it's kosher. And Dalacha, says the Gemara, is the opinion of Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar, which is that he's allowed to eat it. 
Now you'd say, yeah, but this is just a Gemara. We don't uh, pask in that way. I got meat and, uh, you know, the, the rabbi on YouTube told me, no, you can't eat this meat. They have all these problems, all this, this. Habibi, I've already told you guys about two, three years ago when we spoke about meat. If you learn Allah, you'll understand why there's a mistake to think that way. Why? Shukhan Aruch, Chosh Mishpat. Siman, Resh Nun Tet, 259. Seif Vav, sixth Allah. Makom Sheruban Goim, Verov Tabachim Israel. Bema or of an imtsasham shahut mutar ve ushen mutso vim of hataf basar ve shlihole makom aher a filo im rov israel ushen mutso shivadai nityashu bealav. In so many words, exactly what the Gemara says. If the majority of the butchers are Jews, even if the entire city is non-Jews, you disregard the fact that the entire city is non-Jews because the meat is coming from the butchers. And even if only six out of ten, or three out of five, or whatever the majority is, are Jews, you could assume it came from the Jews. And if it came from the Jews, it is definitely kosher. And you're going to say, wait a minute, but what about today when there's some rabbis saying, no, we don't eat the shechita, this shechita is good, this shechita is not good. First and foremost, you have to understand. Rabbi Yonah talks about how a person can get to become a heretic as a result of their lack of knowledge and over-righteousness. Where if you have two pieces of meat, let's say two legs of a cow, and then your friend passes, comes by, and he also has a leg of a cow, but it's not kosher. Staref, he's going to sell to the Arabs. And he leaves his leg of cow next to you and goes to the bathroom. When he comes back, he wants to get his leg, but he saw that somebody moved it. He doesn't know which one it is. Allah is, all three of them are kosher now. And Rabbi Yonah says, if you don't consider all three of them kosher and don't eat from them, you're considered a heretic. Yeah, but you know for sure that one of them was Taref. That was before the mistake was made. Before the mistake was made, two were kosher, one was tarif. After the mistake was made, all three are kosher. Why? According to the laws of how you pask in Allah. If you think otherwise, that's apikosut. That's apikosut, that's heresy. Now, intentionally, Obviously, it's forbidden. Somebody can't just put a third one and say, okay, I made a mistake. No, that's then all of them become non-kosher. So what about all of these different things that you hear about where they say, listen, the shechita over here is not good. The slaughtering the kosher meat is not good here because it's not this and it's not that. That simply means that whoever is saying it is not a pusik and does not know the laws of Alu Pasch and Allah. Why? Because... According to how you pass in Allah, if it comes from a kosher place, unless the place obviously is intentionally corrupt, that's feeding people pig, that's feeding people donkeys, that's feeding people intentionally non-kosher, then even if they make mistakes on the line because there's so many chickens or there's so many cows or so many things else, even if they make mistakes, the majority is kosher and therefore the meat is kosher. The chicken is kosher, meaning there are so many different nuances when it comes to the halakha that for sure you could still consider everything kosher. That's coming from them, you consider it kosher. So what about the fact that some people say, don't eat from this place, but you can eat from that place? Different kashruyot? Rabotai, those are all customs. Customs of how stringent some people choose to be over others. Some people choose to be stringent according to the stringencies of that shechita. Some people consider that shechita not stringent enough for them, so they go to a different shechita. And some people say, no, I prefer this one, so that, but it's all customs. 
as far as kashrut, whether it's rabbanut or it's badats or it's a yamachpud or it's a ou, it's all kosher. It's all kosher. It was done by Jews. It has it's a kosher place. It's all kosher. Now, as far as if you have a custom and you prefer one of them over the other, by all means, you can choose one over the other. But never for a second even think, needless to say, say that somebody is not kosher or that all of the meat is not kosher. Why? That is 100% Lashonara, Shemra, and Apikosut. This is why Gdolei Israel, Rabbi Vadi Yosef, and many others of Gdolei Israel never fought against the Kashrut because they, they were poor scheme. They understood how the Alakha works. You cannot just say all of this kashrut from such and such kashrut is not kosher. That is heresy. That is lashonara. That is shemra. You can't just accuse people just because you saw a video of something that may look fishy or this or that. You can't do stuff like that. It comes from a kosher organization. It's kosher. So much so that we see how, according to the halacha, we trust those seven Jews that are butchers in a city of Gentiles and the eagle that stole the meat from them enough to eat that meat 100% without even thinking twice about it as 100% kosher in the Gemara in Alakha Shuchan Aruch. So, you, so the Torah says, you can trust that it came from one of those Jews, even though there's three Gentiles, that for sure that the meat could have come from them. According to statistics, there's at least 30% chance it could have come from them. That Allah allows you to calculate the 70% as if it's 100%. The 60% as if it's 100%. It's the majority. And what about the eagle that stole it? Irrelevant. And what about returning it to one of the owners? Once an animal has taken the meat from somebody for sure even if it was one of the jewish owners if it was one of the non-jews you don't have to return it to him you can if you want but you don't have to but if a jew lost it and you know this jew lost something you return it to them but once something was stolen by an animal whether it's a bear or eagle or a dog or whatever it is and ran away flew away for sure whoever owned that piece of meat gave up on it and therefore, the moment he gave up on it, it became public property. Even if two seconds later, he sees it. He already gave up on it. It's yours. It's yours. You can eat it, enjoy it, maybe make Shabbat with it if you want, if it's big enough for the whole family. But this shows us, Rabotai Karim, that when a person does not know Allah and how Allah actually works, they can say foolish things. And many times, those foolish things could be corrected if we simply humble ourselves and we realize, okay, I made a mistake. I was a fool. I thought that you can't eat meat. I thought that I could listen to such and such rabbi that says that nothing is kosher in the world, that you can't trust anything. I made a mistake. Let me go back to Da Torah. Why? Because when you go back to Da Torah, you go back to having bracha. But when you don't have Da Torah Rabotai, all you have is klala, all you have is curses, problems. And I can tell you that there's many people that live life full of problems that they've brought unto themselves because they abandoned the Torah. Once we follow what Torah says, blessings are ahead. Bezat Hashem. Thank you.